KBTC, a viewer-supported community service of Bates Technical College. From KBTC Public Television Studios in Tacoma, Washington. Welcome to the Steve on the Street podcast, a closer look behind the headlines as public policy and current affairs impact the real lives of real people. Hello and welcome to the Steve on the Street podcast, produced by KBTC Public Television's public affairs program, Northwest Now. I'm your host, reporter and photojournalist, Steve Kiggins. Today's podcast episode will be covering the aerospace giant and Pacific Northwest own the Boeing Company, which has found itself yet again embroiled in crisis and controversy over its 737 MAX aircraft program. This after an Alaska Airlines flight leaving Portland, Oregon suffered rapid decompression after a door plug flew off the fuselage shortly after takeoff at around 16,000 feet. The flight crew were able to reach air traffic control, declare an emergency, and successfully land the aircraft back at PDX. And shockingly, only minor injuries were reported by the passengers who were on the flight at the time of the incident, including a pair of passengers who were seated in a row directly behind where the door plug flew off. The rush of air sucked out passengers' property, like cell phones and clothing. Somehow, nobody was seated in the row or directly next to the door plug when it blew out. We've heard from aviation experts who have noted that the miraculous serendipity that the incident happened at such a low altitude and pressure that if it had been significantly higher, the outcome of this disaster could have obviously been much worse. Now, in a preliminary investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, the agency revealed the aircraft had been delivered to Alaska Airlines in the late months of 2023. And inspectors discovered that a series of bolts that are supposed to keep the door plug secure to the aircraft appeared to be completely missing, and that the airplane may have been delivered to Alaska in that state. After the Alaska Airlines incident, several other airlines began inspecting their fleet, and even more door plugs were discovered to also be missing the very same bolts intent on securing the door plug to the fuselage. Now, this incident is just one of several high-profile incidents involving commercial aircraft in recent memory, including situations where wheels have been falling off landing gear during takeoff, or hydraulic fluid seen escaping out of the aircraft as a plane took off. I'm certain I'm missing other incidents that I just can't recall off the top of my head, but it all adds up to some serious concern for many who fly and many more who work on the production lines where these aircraft are built. That same concern also being expressed by federal regulators like the FAA, and the NTSB. Now, during a Senate committee hearing in Washington, D.C. back in early March, the NTSB complained that Boeing had somehow not delivered critical paperwork it needed to continue its investigation into the Alaska Airlines incident, leaving Boeing to issue a press release saying essentially it thought it had provided documentation that it believed the NTSB would need, only to admit it had later sent the specific data requested by the investigators only after learning about the deficiency during the Senate committee hearing. So all this adds up to a giant mess for Boeing commercial airplanes. A massive drain on the company's cash flow and stock price, and leaving many in Western Washington to ask aloud, what has happened to Boeing? There was once a time when Boeing was considered a consortium of engineers more than an aircraft manufacturer, focused specifically on quality and safety. Only now the public has watched as that focus shifted only after Boeing and McDonnell Douglas merged some 30 years ago. And since then, a litany of production issues surrounding construction and delivery of Boeing aircraft from the 787 Dreamliner, a pair of fatal crashes of Boeing 737 MAX aircraft less than six months apart in 2018 and 2019 that left 346 passenger and crew killed. And that meant Boeing later agreed to a deferred prosecution agreement with hefty fines to regulators and victims' families. And now a new Department of Justice inquiry into whether Boeing has violated that agreement due to the Alaska Airline incident earlier this year. So next on the podcast, we'll share a recap of what happened in Portland, Oregon, and introduce you to a former Boeing employee 
who does not believe Boeing when the company says it won't retaliate if workers come forward with concerns over production line safety. There's now intensified regulatory scrutiny across production and quality control across the entire 737 MAX program. And Boeing insists it's encouraging its employees to step forward with concerns without fear for retaliation. But tonight, we speak with a former employee who believes the culture of the company cannot change if executive leadership remains. Growing up, I, all of them talk about, oh, Boeing's one of the better companies. Devin Fisher says he followed a long line of family members who helped build America's aviation industry at the Boeing Company. He was hired back in 2011 at the Renton factory installing interiors on the 737. When he identified a procedure that could damage materials, Fisher spoke up to management. They wanted the plane out the door to go to paint. In transport, seats move. So if there's not one in the beginning, one at the end bolted down, they'll scratch the uh, sea rail, which at that point is considered structure. It doesn't affect flyability, but I'd also have to redo my job again. Fisher says his repeated warnings earned him reassignment to another crew and his eventual firing in 2019. Betrayed, maybe? Kind of like lied to, obviously. Fast forward to January 2024. Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 suffered decompression when a cabin door plug ripped away from the fuselage at around 16,000 feet shortly after takeoff. A preliminary NTSB report reveals four bolts that secure the door plug were missing. A March Senate committee hearing with the head of the NTSB shed light on the agency's investigation and the culture at Boeing. The expert review panel found that Boeing employees are still afraid to speak up. There is a way for employees to speak directly to the FAA. Or is there a way for people to speak directly to NTSB to aid in this investigation? Uh, yes, in fact, I received a whistleblower uh, report myself. During a fourth quarter 2023 earnings call to shareholders, Boeing CEO David Calhoun insisted employees should speak out. Use your voice, speak up, focus on every next detail. We will seek out and act on your feedback. It's that confidence from above that Fisher hopes prevails when Boeing's troubles pass. You need to get all new managers. You need to take a whole new approach to it. Now, Boeing has not been able to locate those records detailing Fisher's allegations, but the company says it takes them seriously and doesn't tolerate retaliation. Now, in regards to the Alaskan Airlines incident, the United States Department of Justice has since opened a criminal probe into Boeing to determine whether or not the company may have violated a deferred prosecution agreement in connection to two fatal 737 MAX crashes that killed 346. In Renton, Steve Kiggins, Northwest Now. So, next on the podcast, we'll move on to a deeper conversation with Devin Fisher, the former employee who can share even more insight into his experience working for the aircraft manufacturer. Let me ask you first, do you miss being able to work at Boeing? I miss the people I work with, working with them. Why? Oh, it's a fun crew. Get to know everybody like personal and we all lived <laughs> three, four miles from each other, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you probably all have a really strong connection to what you were doing and took a lot of pride yeah. in well, what you were doing. We were good at what we did, yeah. We were one of the faster crews like that worked there. Even the smallest detail probably take a lot of pride. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? It's kind of a weird question, I get it, but... Yeah. I think it's more... Because it's not just your team or you, it's like... We got to see... A legacy. Yeah. I think the crew wise we took we got to see like the plane from beginning to end with installing interiors and stuff it's cool you get an empty and it by the end of the day it's done literally building something out of nothing with your hands mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's amazing how many seats fit in there too yeah yeah what was your tenure there how long did you be, how long were you were applying uh seven years laid off for two years but seven years total why did you apply in the first place uh it would have made my grandpa happy. So. It means something more than a job. Yeah, yeah. I just, family, a lot of family work there. My grandpa always said, oh, work for Boeing, work for Boeing. And when I got there, I was pretty happy. It's kind of being a part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool to think like, you know, you're building 100 plus million dollar machines flying. That's an American icon. Yeah. 
<laughs> that like, oh, Washington icon very right. much yeah that's central to our economy mm -hmm. central to our region's economy and like mm -hmm. builds a life and livelihood for countless families yeah not everybody speaks out no a lot of people do not why did you mm. well let's start with what you said I told them that it would damage structure on a plane. What would? Uh, so we temp loaded the seats and didn't fasten any of them. They wanted the plane out the door to go to paint. In transport, seats move. So if there's not one in the beginning, one at the end bolted down, they'll scratch the uh, C-rail, which at that point is considered structure. And by damaging that, it's not, it doesn't affect flyability but I'd also have to redo my job again. And it was your job to mention that. Mm -hmm. They always tell you when you hire, you know, if you see something, speak up, speak out. If it's unsafe, do this. You won't get in trouble if you mess a part up. That's not the case. How does that make you feel? <clears throat> Betrayed, maybe? Kind of like lied to, obviously, but I mean. Because that woman, when they let you go, they didn't tell you it's because. No, no. At first I was surprised because when I brought up to the attention to a first level manager, hey, no, I'm not doing this, this is wrong. Second level came, told him, hey, no, this is wrong. Told me, do it anyways. I basically said, screw you. And then they kept getting higher and higher managers and I told all of them in succession, not doing this wrong, screw you, don't care. Uh, I was surprised, that night I got transferred. Like they gave me my paperwork, hey, you're going to another crew. And they, um, they claimed it was for um, overstaffing of the crew I was on, which there, uh, there was more, but I was more senior than a lot of people on the crew. At that point, I, I knew I did a, I pissed somebody off. Do you think you did something wrong? No, not at all. Well, according to them, yeah, I, I screwed up their, their bean count. Do you feel you did something wrong? No, not at all. How do you wrap your head around everything that's gone on ever since you left? Not surprising to me, honestly. There's no, it's not wrapping my head around, it's, it's just simply not surprising to me at all. How Boeing is, how they've, I've seen them progress towards what they are now, not surprising. What are they now? Cash cow, that's all they care about, money. It's quality's gone out the window. There's simply, they, they don't allow enough time for planes to be built properly. They want them out the door as fast as humanly possible. They want no errors. They want perfect things out the door, but that fast, you're not getting perfect. It's, it's you, you have to, it's either time or quality. Which one do you pick? Where do you think this, this Genesis started? I want to say it was Calhoun. Like post McDonnell Douglas. Yeah, it was, it was definitely after that's when they started just declining. Well, let me just ask you your opinion on John Barnett. He's the guy that spent his career yeah. quality assuring the Dreamliner and second day of his deposition, he's found dead. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. I, I, if you've already gone the length to point out mistakes, everything, why would you do that? I don't mind telling my story, right? Yeah. More people, maybe more people that work there are or will will stand up to do the right thing. Maybe, hopefully, not be afraid of losing their job or being retaliated against something like that. That would be nice. That's what we keep hearing from Boeing management. You see something, you say something. Step forward. If there's a concern for safety. That's a lie. How do you fix the system then? If, if it's as systemic as some are concerned it is, what's well, how do you You need to get all new managers. You need to take a whole new approach to it. They need to slow down production. Or if they were smart, they would expand. Instead of three lines, they need to dump all the money they can into it, get four, maybe five lines running. That way they can have the mass amount of planes they want being pumped out and they can slow down. Knowing what you know and what, what you've seen and reading the news of the past, I don't know, six months, would you board Boeing aircraft? 
situational. I would rather not, but if I had no other option and I needed to go somewhere, I would. Maybe they think they're too big to fail and now it's, it's finally catching up to them of them trying to just go profit hand over fist, hand over fist, and now it's finally at the point where it's like, yeah, you, you made the money, right? But at what cost now? It would be nice to see them go back to how they used to be, you know, the top quality thing, right? That'd be cool. That's what drew you to them? Yeah. This is my grandpa, you know, growing up, I, all of them talk about, oh, Boeing's one of the better companies. They take care of their employees. They do this, X, Y, Z, and then I get there and it's not that company anymore. So, still lots of hurdles for Boeing to overcome before it can resume a strong delivery of new aircraft to customers, not to mention working on certification for new variants of the 737 MAX. Those, those variants are what airlines are eager to acquire to get into service. Plus, we're also waiting to see what Boeing comes up with as federal regulators now require the company to detail a plan for how to fix systemic quality control issues. And will it be enough to solidify trust of both regulators and the flying public? So, thanks to Devin Fisher for his bravery sharing his experience while working for Boeing. And thanks very much to you for taking the time and interest to spend some of it here with me on the Steve and the Street podcast. It's always nice to have you. Thank you. Once again, I'm reporter and photojournalist Steve Kickens. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Cheers.